Okay, what I'm going to show today, and this is something that's normally in the mineral field, but it's a it's a real good thing for the jewelry in too. Uh, I'm going to show how to grow uh, bismuth crystals, and uh, whenever you do this, what you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of heat source. It doesn't have to be real hot. You can use your stove, but I don't recommend doing this in the house, even even though you can vent the fumes out. It's not going to be that bad, but I just recommend doing it outside. I use my turkey fryer with a propane tank. You need some good heavy leather gloves that's going to insulate. You, you need a shield, and preferably you need a, a leather apron. Uh, if you're real careful, you won't get this on you. It's not that, that dangerous, but bismuth is a heavy mineral and so when you pick it up be aware be ready uh, any uh, any of this that gets on you it's going to be over 500 degrees and it's definitely going to be third degree burn so just be aware and we'll get started okay the first thing in order to grow crystals is we have to melt the metal and it melts at a little over 500 degrees and you can kind of see that it's starting to melt a little bit right now. Okay, as you can see my metal is warm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and get a little more insulation on my hands. Now what I'll do is I'll pour it into this container that I have warmed up here already. Now be careful not to splash it and just pour it in here. Now this container here is sitting on a, a uh, ceramic hot plate. Now what it's going to start doing is, is cooling down. And as it starts cooling down, we're going to go ahead and unplug this hot plate so it takes the heat off the container. Now you can rake off the whatever slag you have on here. Get rid of it. Okay, now we'll let it start cooling down. As it starts cooling, and we'll come back to it here in just a little bit. Okay, we'll keep watching it. As you can see, little ripples coming across the top of it. That tells you it's still too hot. As it sets up, you, you won't see those ripples. And then uh, once we get to where we don't see those come all the way across, We'll make sure that the piece stays mobile in there. Okay, as you can see, this one particular section here is is uh, set up kind of solid. So what we want to do is we want to make sure this this is uh, not making contact nowhere. So we'll keep and make sure it moves. You're actually growing crystals all around the edge of this container too. But if you're wanting a piece with a flat bottom, then you would uh, you want to keep this piece suspended in the middle. As it cools down, the uh, crystals grow bigger and bigger. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to take this piece and we're going to go ahead and take it out. And as 
you can see how the crystals are formed there. And as it hits the air, it changes. take the rest of this and let it settle in. going to actually take this and we're going to pour off the rest of this back into the container. And you notice all the crystals it's tilted toward the light. Okay, that's good. And now what we'll do is we'll try to get these out of here as much as we can undamaged. Okay, we have this out of the, the bowl. Now we're, we're not needing all of this because some of it isn't that good of material. In fact, it's really not the best. But the thing about doing uh, bismuth crystals is that when you melt it down and it doesn't come out like you want it, it's a simple process about doing it over. You just recast it. Whoops. This one is kind of neat the way that it's I get in light. As you can see, that's kind of a neat little pattern there. You think that one's worth keeping or remailed it? Uh, it looks okay. That looks good, I think. What do you think? It looks it looks good. It's not the best, but it looks good. Now your color depends on the oxidation and the temperature of it when it oxidizes. So
it is you notice how some are dark and, and some are lighter and that's because the the temperature now if it could have like blew air in the chamber once we dumped it or something it might even made a difference in it but it's it's it's, it's actual temperature i find it's best if you keep this area clear around the top of here and you can just keep raking. You can actually see crystals forming on my screwdriver. But what I try to do is keep this piece where it's, it's, it's mo it can move around. Because the longer it sets in there, the, the longer or the bigger the crystals will grow. And if I can kind of keep this around, which I have crystals growing all on the side, so it makes a, a problem. I'll just keep this moving. If it, if it gets where it's not going to move, if it gets dry and stops moving, then, then uh, it's... Uh, it, It'll, get, it'll be stuck to the side and then you can't can't get it out but it'll just keep moving it around as long as it's moving when it appears that it's it's not wanting to move or getting hard just grab a hold of it and take it out and which this didn't grow any real tall crystals, but it has a nice matrix to it. Now what we'll do with this is we'll dump this back in there and we'll see what we get. take this out. We'll let this cool down and then we'll break it apart and uh, keep which crystals we want. And then we'll just remelt the rest. One, one thing to be sure when you're doing this, make sure you use uh, some metal containers that you're not going to be reusing. I recommend stainless steel as far as not reusing for food. These will be strictly for growing your crystals the pan you use the same way now uh, if you do this right you take your time let it cool down you should come out with some pretty nice crystals now I have about eight eight pounds of uh, bismuth and uh, that's enough to get a pretty good size if you're going to get bigger crystals you're going to have to have 
uh, more material, but realize it's going to be heavy when it's hot. It doesn't take that long to heat up on, this is just my turkey fryer, so I don't do it in the house. Now you can do this on the stove. You can even do this on a hot plate. Now I have a ceramic heater, uh, or ceramic heat plate, which gets way plenty hot enough to either, either way you do it, uh, there's a lot of different ways to heat this. Just realize don't rush the process, let it cool down. If, you're, if you try to cool it too quick, it's going to have smaller crystals. I hope you like this video. Uh, bismuth crystals are nice to uh, add to your jewelry. Uh, I, <clears throat> that tends to be a trend now, uh, using them. The key is, you know, you don't want to grow them too big. If you're growing them for a specimen, that's fine. Uh, you you want the bare crystals for your display. But if you're doing them for jewelry, you won't want them to stick out real far. You'll want them smaller. The amount of time you wait, and it's something you'll just have to learn on your own as far as how long to let them grow. And sometimes, uh, even though you you leave the piece the, the same amount of time as another piece in there, it cools down at a different rate and the crystals might be larger or smaller so it's, if, if you don't get what you want just uh, take throw it back in there melt it down again the most important thing I want to emphasize is safety uh, because you're working with molten metal if you like my video uh, go ahead and like it if you want to uh, see my newest ones whenever they come out just subscribe and hit the bell uh, I appreciate you watching